the casting process for Have Gun Will Travel, a popular 1957 TV series, was thorough and thoughtful. Each actor was carefully chosen to bring depth and authenticity to their roles. For the lead role of Paladin, the producers wanted a distinguished and sophisticated actor. Richard Boone, with his commanding presence and deep voice, was a perfect fit. Boone's audition showcased his ability to portray Paladin's complex character a gentleman, a scholar, and a hired gun. The co-star, Cam Tong, who played Hey Boy, was chosen for his authenticity. As a Chinese-American actor, he brought an authentic touch to the role, which was rare for the time. His chemistry with Boone was instant, and their friendship became a defining aspect of the show. For the role of Missy, a saloon owner, the producers wanted a strong and independent woman. Jean Cooper, who later became a daytime television legend, was chosen for her assertive audition and her ability to hold her own against Boone. The casting of the supporting roles was equally meticulous. Veteran actors like Hal Needham and Lee Van Cleef were chosen for their experience and ability to bring depth to their characters. Their auditions demonstrated their understanding of their roles and their ability to contribute to the show's overall dynamic. The casting process also included chemistry tests to ensure that the actors would work well together. These tests helped the producers make final decisions about who would be the best fit for each role. The pivotal moments during the casting process were the auditions, where the actors had the opportunity to showcase their talents and their understanding of their characters. In conclusion, the casting process for Have Gun Will Travel was a careful and considered one. Each actor was chosen for their ability to bring depth and authenticity to their roles, resulting in a compelling and engaging show. Good morning. Have Gun Will Travel, a popular 1957 TV series, was brought to life by director Richard Boone. Boone's directorial vision was characterized by a strong focus on character development and authentic period detail. He was influenced by classic Western literature and films, which he used as a foundation to build the series' unique style. Boone's approach to storytelling was marked by his commitment to realism. He worked closely with the cast and crew to ensure that every element of the production, from set design to costumes, accurately reflected the time period. Boone believed that authenticity was key to engaging the audience and making the story believable. In terms of style, Boone favored a minimalist approach. He avoided flashy camera movements and special effects, instead relying on strong performances and well-crafted narratives to drive the story forward. Boone's direction was characterized by a sense of stillness and quiet intensity, which allowed the characters and their conflicts to take center stage. Boone's collaborative style was also a key factor in the success of Have Gun Will Travel. He worked closely with the writers, actors, and crew members, encouraging them to contribute their own ideas and insights. This collaborative approach helped to create a rich and nuanced world, one that continues to captivate audiences today. In conclusion, Richard Boone's directorial vision for Have Gun Will Travel was marked by a commitment to realism, a minimalist style, and a collaborative approach. His influence can be seen in every aspect of the series, from the authentic set design to the strong performances and well-crafted narratives. Boone's legacy continues to resonate with audiences today, a testament to his enduring impact on the world of television. Have Gun Will Travel is a classic 1957 TV series that has stood the test of time. The show stars Richard Boone as Paladin, a gentleman gunfighter who offers his services for hire. The show's enduring qualities include its memorable characters, sharp writing, and moral dilemmas that still resonate today. Many fans of the show have their favorite classic Hollywood actors who appeared as guests. Some of these actors include John Anderson, James Best, and Lee Van Cleef. Each brought their unique style and talent to the show, making it even more enjoyable. Throughout this video, we'll share some funny, shocking, and sad facts about Have Gun Will Travel that you might not know. Keep watching to learn more. Do you have a most cherished memory or personal experience related to Have Gun Will Travel? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Whether it's a favorite episode, a memorable line, or a guest star who made an impression, we want to hear from you. My wife's. This house, everything in it, is her idea. 
Have Gun Will Travel, a popular 1957 TV series, was known for its impressive production elements, including set design, locations, and logistical challenges. The show was set in the Old West, requiring the production team to create realistic and immersive sets. They built a standing set for the hotel where the main character, Paladin, lived and worked. This set included a luxurious lobby and Paladin's private suite, complete with a grand piano and a well-stocked library. The production team also had to find suitable locations for filming exterior scenes. They often traveled to outdoor settings such as ranches, deserts, and mountains to capture the rugged beauty of the Old West. These locations presented logistical challenges such as limited access to water, electricity, and other amenities. The crew had to bring all necessary equipment and supplies with them, including generators, lighting, and catering services. One innovative technique employed during production was the use of a new type of camera dolly. This dolly was designed to move smoothly over rough terrain, allowing the camera to follow the actors as they rode horses or walked through difficult landscapes. This technology helped to create more dynamic and engaging scenes, enhancing the overall viewing experience. The production team also paid close attention to historical accuracy, researching the clothing, weapons, and other details of the Old West to ensure authenticity. They consulted with historians, visited museums, and studied photographs and other primary sources to create a realistic and immersive world for the show. Despite the challenges of filming in remote locations and creating realistic sets, the production team of Have Gun Will Travel was able to produce a high-quality TV series that resonated with audiences. Their innovative techniques and attention to detail helped to create a captivating and enduring show that continues to be enjoyed by viewers today. The 1957 TV series Have Gun Will Travel features two main actors, Ben Wright and Cam Tong, who play the character Hayboy in the radio and TV versions respectively. It's interesting to note that while white actors were still playing Asian and Indian roles in movies during that time, TV shows like Have Gun Will Travel and Bonanza had Asian actors playing such roles, possibly indicating a more progressive outlook in television. In the radio version of Have Gun Will Travel, Hayboy's hey real name is revealed, and in the TV version, he is portrayed by an Asian actor, which is a refreshing change as he is typically known for playing villainous characters in TV series and movies. John Daner, who plays a villainous character in the TV series, also has a notable role as a good guy in this show. The show's two episodes, Hayboy's hey Revenge and Winchester Quarantine, showcase the character's interactions with an Indian man and his wife, treating them with dignity and respect. This reflects the show's positive representation of marginalized communities during that time. Overall, Have Gun Will Travel is a TV series that offers a nuanced portrayal of its characters and themes, making it a worthwhile watch for anyone interested in classic television. This is Cece, their patron saint. He who loved all God's creatures, and who was loved by them. The creation of a musical score and soundtrack is a crucial aspect of filmmaking and the 1957 TV series Have Gun Will Travel is no exception. The music for this Western series was composed by several talented musicians, including Bernard Herrmann, David Rose, and Jerry Goldsmith. The score complements the narrative and emotional tone of the series by enhancing the on-screen action and highlighting the character's emotions. For instance, during tense scenes, the music might feature fast-paced, dramatic strings, while in more introspective moments, it might employ gentle, melodic piano themes. Bernard Herrmann, who composed the music for the series pilot episode, was known for his ability to create music that perfectly matched the mood of a scene. He once said, I try to score the psychological subtext of a film, not just the action. This approach is evident and have gun will travel, where the music subtly underscores the character's motivations and emotions. David Rose, who took over from Herrmann, also brought his unique style to the series. His compositions often featured a blend of traditional Western themes with a more modern, jazz-influenced sound. This fusion of styles helped to give Have Gun Will Travel a distinctive musical identity. Jerry Goldsmith, who composed the music for the series' final season, was also known for his innovative approach to film scoring. He once said, I like to think of music as a tool, a way of telling a story. In Have Gun Will Travel, his music beautifully enhances the storytelling, providing a rich emotional backdrop to the on-screen action. 
In conclusion, the musical score and soundtrack of Have Gun Will Travel were crafted by skilled composers and musicians who understood how to use music to enhance a narrative and emotional tone. Their work remains a testament to the power of music and storytelling. Debbie ought to tie me up. Yeah. You and the judge get the rope over there and tie him up. In the 1957 television series Have Gun Will Travel, actor Harry Carey Jr. played a significant role. Carey, who served as a pharmacist mate in the United States Navy during World War II, provided medical assistance to wounded servicemen in the Pacific Theater. His character's business card, featuring the show's title and an image of a knight chess piece, symbolized the character's readiness to take on various tasks. Another notable actor in the series was Charles Bronson, whose biography can be found in the Scribner Encyclopedia of American Lives, Volume 7, 23-2005. Bronson's portrayal added depth to the show's cast, making it a must-watch for many viewers during its time. Throughout the series, the characters' experiences and challenges resonated with audiences, leaving a lasting impact on television history. The show's straightforward and unadorned style, devoid of unnecessary embellishments, made it accessible to a wide range of viewers, including older audiences who appreciated its simplicity and directness. One of the most iconic scenes in Have Gun Will Travel is from the episode The Outlaw. In this scene, Paladin, the show's protagonist, played by Richard Boone, faces off against a notorious outlaw, Wesley, in a tense and gripping gunfight. The direction by Andrew V. McLaglen is exceptional, with careful framing and pacing that builds suspense. The camera focuses on the characters' faces, highlighting their every emotion, and the use of close-ups and medium shots adds to the intensity of the scene. Boone's performance is remarkable. He embodies Paladin's calm and confident demeanor, contrasting sharply with the outlaw's nervous and erratic behavior. Boone's subtle facial expressions and body language convey Paladin's thoughts and intentions, making the scene even more engaging. The cinematography by Walter Strange is also noteworthy. The use of shadows and light creates a dramatic and atmospheric setting, enhancing the tension between the two characters. The wide shots of the desert landscape in the background provide a stark contrast to the close-ups of the characters' faces, emphasizing the isolation and loneliness of the scene. According to Boone, The Outlaw was one of his favorite episodes, and he particularly enjoyed the gunfight scene. He said, It was a classic showdown, and I think it really captured the essence of the show. The impact of this scene on the audience is significant. It showcases the show's themes of morality, justice, and the human condition, and it highlights the complexities of the characters. The scene has become iconic in Western television and has inspired many similar scenes in subsequent shows and movies. Overall, the direction, performance, and cinematography in this scene come together to create a powerful and memorable moment and have gun will travel. It is a testament to the show's enduring legacy and its contribution to the Western genre. See what he's doing. He's trying to get us on each other's necks, hoping we'll draw blood. Richard Boone and Peter Lawford, stars of the 1957 TV series Have Gun Will Travel, were reportedly arrested in a gay brothel in 1952 while filming Kangaroo. This information comes from Maureen O'Hara's autobiography, as the incident was kept from the press by 20th Century Fox. Ken Curtis, who played a role in Have Gun Will Travel, changed his stage name to Ken Curtis when he temporarily replaced Frank Sinatra in Tommy Dorsey's band in 1941. Boone's later career was affected by his chronic alcoholism. His struggle led him to walk off the set of God's Gun in 1976, resulting in his dialogue being dubbed by someone else in the film. You're not guilty. You have nothing to be afraid of. Have Gun Will Travel, a 1957 TV series, made a significant cultural and social impact. The show, starring Richard Boone as Paladin, a gentleman gunfighter, was popular and influential. Audiences were drawn to the character's complexity and the show's themes of morality and justice. The series resonated with viewers due to its unique take on the Western genre. Paladin, a well-educated and cultured gunfighter, challenged traditional stereotypes of the Wild West. He was a thinking man's hero, preferring to use his wits and intelligence to solve problems before resorting to violence. Have Gun Will Travel also influenced pop culture. Its theme song, composed by Bernard Herrmann, became a classic. 
The show's distinctive opening sequence, featuring a chess knight, became an iconic symbol of the series. Additionally, Paladin's character inspired other TV and film characters, such as the man from UNCLES Napoleon Solo and James Bond. The series contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. It explored the complexities of morality and justice in the Wild West. Paladin often found himself in morally ambiguous situations, forcing him to make difficult decisions. This reflected the realities of the time as society grappled with issues of right and wrong. Furthermore, Have Gun Will Travel challenged racial stereotypes. The show featured diverse characters, including African American and Native American actors in prominent roles. This was significant for the time, as television was often criticized for its lack of diversity. In conclusion, Have Gun Will Travel left a lasting cultural and social impact. Its complex characters, exploration of moral themes, and challenge of racial stereotypes made it a groundbreaking series. It resonated with audiences, influenced pop culture, and contributed to important social discussions. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Denver Pyle, known for his role in Have Gun Will Travel, crossed paths with James Best in The Left-Handed Gun, and later co-starred with him in The Dukes of Hazard. Hank Patterson, another cast member, appeared in two 1950s science fiction films featuring giant spiders. Notably, Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, wrote 24 episodes of Have Gun Will Travel, receiving the Writers Guild of America Award for Best Original Script for one of them. And I believe that St. Elmo might be happier seeing you in something. Have Gun Will Travel, a 1957 TV series, received positive reviews from critics and audiences alike. The show's thoughtful and complex storytelling, combined with its strong performances, was praise. The New York Times described it as a consistently intelligent and adult show. The lead actor, Richard Boone, was particularly singled out for his portrayal of the main character, Paladin. His performance was hailed as compelling and multi-layered by critics. The show's writing was also commended for its intelligence and depth. Have Gun Will Travel was nominated for several awards, including four Primetime Emmy Awards. Richard Boone received a nomination for Outstanding Continued Performance by an Actor in a Leading Role in a Dramatic Series. The show's writing and direction were also recognized with nominations. These accolades are significant as they highlight the high quality of the show and the talent of those involved. Nominations and awards can help to boost the show's profile, attracting more viewers and critical attention. They can also serve as a mark of recognition for the cast and crew, validating their hard work and dedication. In addition to its critical success, Have Gun Will Travel was also popular with audiences. It ran for six seasons and a total of 225 episodes, a testament to its enduring appeal. The show's themes of morality, justice, and the human condition continue to resonate with viewers today. Well, tell him that I was inquiring about Martin Kilmer. Yeah, yeah, sure. Jack Scott, a familiar face in the television industry, was a guest at the Twilight Zone convention in 26, reminiscing with fans about her work. Prior to this, Ken Curtis, who played the sidekick on Ripcord, became the co-star on Gunsmoke, replacing James Arness as deputy. In the world of cinema, Charles Bronson, known for his role in The Great Escape, was considered for the part of General Stanislaw Sosabowski in A Bridge Too Far. However, Gene Hackman was ultimately cast in the role, directed by Richard Attenborough, who had co-starred with Bronson in The Great Escape. Despite not getting the part, Bronson's enduring career remained a testament to his talent and mark in the film industry. Take me there, and you may have to kill for me, gunfight. The production of Have Gun Will Travel was not without its share of memorable moments. Richard Boone, who played the lead role of Paladin, was known for his strict adherence to realism. During the filming of a barroom brawl scene, Boone insisted on using real glasses instead of prop ones, leading to several broken windows and a slightly frightened cast and crew. Boone's co-star, Cam Tong, who played Hey Boy, often shared stories about his experiences as one of the few Asian actors in Hollywood at the time. Tong faced significant challenges in the industry due to racial prejudices, but found solace in the supportive environment on the Have Gun Will Travel set. The show's creator, Sam Peckinpah, was known for his meticulous attention to detail. He often clashed with the show's producers over the show's tone, 
preferring a darker, more serious approach compared to their more lighthearted vision. Despite these tensions, Peckinpah's creative input was invaluable to the show's success. Behind the scenes, the crew faced numerous challenges, including tight shooting schedules and limited budgets. However, they always managed to deliver high-quality episodes, thanks in large part to the dedication and hard work of the entire team. One particularly challenging episode involved filming a stagecoach chase scene in the desert. The crew faced extreme temperatures and sandstorms, but they persevered, capturing some of the most exciting footage of the series. Despite these challenges, the cast and crew of Have Gun Will Travel remained dedicated to their work, creating a show that resonated with audiences and left a lasting impact on the Western genre. In the final episode of Have Gun, Will Travel, Harry Carey Jr. made an appearance. Charles Bronson, known for his role in the series, was approached by Tennessee Williams to play a part in his play, The Red Devil Battery Sign, in 1975, but Bronson declined. Actor Olin Soule, who appeared in both the radio and TV versions of Captain Midnight, played Agent Kelly, SS-11 on the radio, and Tut the Scientist Inventor on the TV show. Well, he was the best coffee maker this side of Santa Fe. Come on now. Have Gun Will Travel, a 1957 TV series, holds a significant place in film history. The show, starring Richard Boone as Paladin, a gentleman gunfighter, introduced a new kind of Western hero, one who is educated, cultured, and morally ambiguous. This character type would later inspire anti-heroes in films and TV shows like Dirty Harry and Breaking Bad. The series was also innovative in its use of flashbacks, dream sequences, and narrative structure, influencing future storytelling techniques in television and film. Its episodic nature, with a mix of standalone stories and ongoing character arcs, set a precedent for many successful TV series to come. Have Gun Will Travel also had a substantial impact on the Western genre. It explored complex themes such as morality, justice, and the human condition, adding depth and nuance to the genre. The show's success paved the way for other thoughtful westerns, including The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, in Deadwood. Moreover, the series inspired several subsequent works. The character of Paladin was parodied in A Fistful of Yen, a martial arts spoof in the film Kentucky Fried Movie. The show's theme song, composed by Bernard Herrmann, is still recognizable today and has been covered by various artists. In essence, Have Gun Will Travel, with its groundbreaking storytelling and character development, left an indelible mark on the film industry, influencing future filmmaking and inspiring numerous subsequent works. A Gatling gun? How much are they paying you for that? It was the only way I could bargain for Marine's life. June Vinson, a blonde actress known for her roles in low-budget films of the 1940s, appeared in an episode of Have Gun Will Travel. Parts of the episode The Colonel and The Lady were filmed on sets used for gun smoke, including the Long Branch Saloon, which was minimally redecorated to represent a saloon in a Nevada mining town. Ken Curtis, who played Festus on Gunsmoke, was inducted into the Hall of Great Western Performers of the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in 1981. His casting in Have Gun Will Travel highlights the connection between the two popular Western series. The use of existing sets and the inclusion of a well-known Western actor in Have Gun Will Travel demonstrates the interconnectedness of the Western genre on television during this time. Red's gonna be all right. He's gonna live. In the classic television series Have Gun Will Travel, several actors later became known for their roles in other shows. For instance, Ken Curtis, who played the character Festus Hagen, first appeared in Gunsmoke in an episode called Us Hagen's. Although Festus was introduced as having a twin brother, this fact was never mentioned again in the series. Charles Bronson, who also appeared in Have Gun Will Travel, met his second wife, Jill Ireland, during the filming of The Great Escape. At that time, Ireland was still married to David McCallum. Hank Patterson, another actor in Have Gun Will Travel, was in his late 70s and almost completely deaf when he began working on Green Acres. Despite his hearing impairment, the producers loved his portrayal and worked around his disability by having the dialogue coach tap his leg with a yardstick to signal when it was his turn to speak. Well, it's too late to trace them. I think the only thing we can do is circulate warning. Richard Boone, the star of Have Gun Will Travel, had a horse named Rafter, a name he himself selected. 
Throughout the show's six-year run, the horses used were named Curly, Frisco, Rudy, Mexico, and Rafter. Before his role in Have Gun Will Travel, Denver Pyle was originally cast as Matt Dillon in Gunsmoke, but James R. Nass was eventually given the part. Ken Curtis, who had a long association with John Ford, was accused by Ford of being a wife beater after his divorce from Ford's daughter Barbara in 1964. Let me talk to the girl. Ken Curtis, known for his role as Festus on Gunsmoke, had a notably different acting style in his early career. Interestingly, his Festus accent is reminiscent of the natural speech of character actor Struther Martin, who also appeared on Gunsmoke. Curtis hailed from a musical family, with his father playing the fiddle and his mother the pump organ, among other musical siblings. On the other hand, Charles Bronson brought his own real-life experiences to his roles. His claustrophobia, developed from working in coal mines, was incorporated into his character Danny in The Great Escape. Additionally, Bronson's artistic talent was reflected in his portrayal of Alaska as an heritage. His ability to infuse personal experiences and talents into his characters added depth and authenticity to his performances. Too bad, gunfighter. Ben, I'm running the hobbies now. If the 1957 TV series Have Gun Will Travel left an impression on you, we'd love to hear your stories. Share your memories and experiences related to this classic Western show. Did it impact you personally? How did it influence your perspective on cinema? Your engagement is essential. We encourage you to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Let's spark conversation and learn from each other's viewpoints. Perhaps you admired the protagonist's sense of justice, or the show's morally complex themes left you pondering. Whatever your connection, we'd like to know. Help us create a community where we can share our love for classic television and learn from its lasting influence. So, don't hold back, tell us your story. And now we'll just, uh... I warn you, monsieur.